are pretty on Ulysses. There it is. Well, hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. I have a big Friday Reads agenda today. I'm starting the year off in good humor. I've actually decided the title before I uh, recorded the video. That's the first time, maybe. So, uh, oh my goodness, it's 7.45 p.m. on Friday night. My Friday Reads is usually long published. I've already had a comment from Mark Nash by now, but it's been a day, so... I'll start off with my first sip of wine, and if it's sloppily edited, that means that the bottle of wine was finished before the editing was. Let's get started. I have so much to tell you. So, how many books have I finished? I have no bail. Oh, wait. Maybe I do. No, 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 no. I do have a bail. I'll get to that later. I almost forgot. This may be a record, but I have finished eight books, so let me tell you about those. The first one was on audio, Brooklyn by Kom Toibin. I loved this so much. It was a five-star listen, five-star read for me. The audio was incredibly easy to listen to. It's the first Kom Toibin anything that I've read in decades, and it's just a very simple story about shortly after World War II, a young Irish woman, like in her 20s or something, emigrates to Brooklyn from her small town in Ireland and the life that she makes there. There's no exaggerated uh, white or black characters. Everybody's a bit gray and I'm lo I loved that. And the story was... Do you know what hooked me was by the end, it got a little bit dramatic and I'm... And I loved the way Toybin sorted all that out. He had me on the edge of my seat, and I thought it was the perfect ending to, again, a very simple tale about a woman coming into her own, uh, the, f separating from her family and making a new life and getting involved in romantic things and making friends and finding work that just was told with such a simple power that... This sounds like a cliche, so I'm going to use it. It just restored my faith in storytelling. It was fantastic. And I finished our buddy read of Luna by Sharon Butella. Five-star read for me, and Britta really enjoyed it too. I have filmed a full review that you probably won't see for a few days. I have a bit of a backlog of videos to get out to you, but this was just powerful. This will leave a lasting impression. I was quite enthusiastic about this last week, the Poonachi, or the story of a black goat by Permo Mergen, translated from the Tamil by N. Kalyan Raman. And it kind of, it kind of got old uh, for me by the end. It's not a very long novel, 140 pages maybe, 170 pages. It just went further and further into the character of the goat and the other goats and that stopped working for me before the novel was over i just can't really deal with animals being given human characteristics and emotions and even conversation so it's uh, it seemed a little childish by the end uh, animals are important but i don't want them speaking and feeling in my novels. Is it too much to ask? I'm certainly going to read more by Promo Morgan. I loved his novel last year, One Part Woman, but uh, no more animal stories, please. Even less satisfying, uh, sadly, was this uh, novel by Mary Wesley that I was quite excited about last week, Jumping the Queue. But the good news is, this is her debut, so I'm still intrigued to read more. I'll probably skip to at least her third or fourth novel. She wrote a, a ton of novels, I think. She didn't start being published until 70 and, and wrote, well, at the, maybe she didn't write a ton. I see at least five listed here in this edition. I'm still really intrigued by her, but this was bad. It was just a dog's breakfast of a plot. I told you last week that it, it's about a widow. She's not that old, and she's suicidal, and as she's preparing to doff herself at the river, she meets a guy who she quickly realizes planning is planning to do the same thing, and they end up uh, not... They end up trying to save each other, and it, the story of their relationship started out intriguing and then got muddied by 
way too much of this widow's backstory and the uh, man who that was suicidal was kind of an onlooker and the way that he interacted with the characters that started to emerge it it ended up that the darkness of this story was completely betrayed by the hokiness of the story and i didn't enjoy it at all two stars in the last two days of 2019, I polished off three very short books. The shortest one, and the most disappointing one, was this novella. Yeah, definitely novella, 100 pages. Petulia's Rouge Tin by Su Tong, translated from the Chinese by Jane Weizen Pan and Martin Murs. I really enjoyed the first two I read in this Penguin China special series of Chinese novellas, but this one wasn't very good. I might try something else by Su Tong, because the story start, started out interesting, and the premise was interesting. It was set... The Chinese communists were victorious in 1950, right? 1949. And once they uh, took power, they closed down all the brothels. So this novella is about the lives of two prostitutes after the brothels have been closed down. One is sent to a labor re-education camp, and the other escapes from the truck carrying all of those prostitutes to that camp, and it's what th their lives are like. But what I hated about it, really came to just loathe about this, was that the characters didn't make any sense. Their emotions were so willy-nilly that it was just, it made me angry. Like, I know that some people have mercurial personalities and they can be hot and cold and loving and furious within a second. But every character was like that. And to me, it was just really sloppy fiction making. It was really sloppy writing. I just couldn't stand it by the end. I didn't care about anything or anyone. It was no good. Because of the bail I'm about to tell you about, I turned to this collection of short stories from India. Pants Light and Other Stories by Faneshwar Nath Renu, a fairly famous Hindi writer that I had never heard of, but I picked this up used a few years ago and had always been curious about it, translated from the Hindi by Rakshanda Jalil. I really enjoyed these stories. Four stars. The translation is gorgeous, the writing is really strong, and almost all of these I couldn't quite understand, and that's part of what I loved about them. The culture is so different. There was enough universal humanity in the people that I could get a lot of it, but what I couldn't get made me enjoy the stories all the more. And that is not something that I always feel, but I felt it very strongly here. So most of these stories were fantastic. And the more that I immersed myself in Indian culture and history, I'm planning to read a kind of a survey history of India early in 2020 because I'm so interested in the literature, but I, I don't have the knowledge of the culture and history that, that I'd like. But the more that I do that, I'm going to revisit this, and I would like to read more by Renu. The stories are set in Bihar, and it's hard to find. It's expensive to buy. I got it for like 3 or $4 at a used bookstore, but to buy it online, it's more like $30. But if you ever have a chance to read it and you're interested in Indian literature, I thought this was fantastic. And finally, the third read of my two-day year-end readathon was the most successful, and that is thanks to Brian of Book Wanting, Vladimir Oldevsky's Two Princesses, translated from the Russian by Neil Cornwell. And this was just fantastic. This was just excellent. Hesperus is the publisher, and they have a series of Hesperus classics, and I've checked on Amazon, and there's like dozens of them. The book is beautiful with French flaps and really heavy paper and they're not that expensive and I want to read a whole bunch more of them. This is actually two short novellas about Russian princesses and in Russian history it, these were set in the early 19th century and at that time there were more princes and princesses than you could shake a stick at. There were just so many so it's not like the the czar's daughters or anything. Princesses were a dime a dozen in those days. There's very little connection between the two princesses. There's very little connection between the two novellas, but the personalities of Princess Mimi, the princess protagonist of the first story, and Princess Zizi of the second uh, couldn't be more different. And what I... Actually, you know what? I'm going to shut up because I am planning to do a full review, But so I'll just finish on this thought. What I was most impressed by was there was a really modern feel to the structure 
and the narration. Stay tuned for my review. It, I'm backlogged with reviews, so eventually, in early 2020, I will put a review out there. But thank you, Brian of Book Wanting. This was a hit. This was the last book I read in the year and the decade, and I loved it. And here is the bale that I almost forgot that I needed to tell you about. And I am really sad about this bale because this had the most beautiful cover. One of the most beautiful covers I've seen in years. I bailed on this Irish novella, Tea at Four O'Clock by Janet McNeil. This was originally published in 1956. It wasn't very good, I, so I, I, did, I just couldn't finish it. It started out intriguingly opening with the funeral of a really prickly woman who died after a long illness and she never married and her sister that took care of her for months if not years had never married and then there was a brother that was estranged decades before that enters the story the day of the funeral i won't say any more than that i think some of you might enjoy it but i just by about a fifth of the way in i don't remember how much i read it was about maybe a quarter of the way in i was totally turned off by the simplicity of the characters, especially their emotional reactions. It just wasn't engaging enough on that emotional level. The writing in places was fine. I thought, again, it opened quite powerfully, but I didn't end up liking it well enough to continue. So I'm very disappointed, but she did write some later. This was kind of mid-career. She started out writing children's literature and turned to adult fiction. Now that I think of it, maybe that explains what I was having trouble with, the overly simplistic kind of emotional makeup of the characters. That's actually interesting. But she did write more later. I would be curious to try one of those. So that's what I have finished and bailed on, and now it's time for some more wine. So aside from the bigger books that I mentioned in last Friday's Friday Reads that I was planning to carry over into the new year, I cleared my plate and started five new books dying to tell you about them because they're all starting out really well huh? oh i don't even have them all here for god's sakes to be honest uh since new year's day i haven't had as much time as i expected that i would have to read so i haven't gotten very far into any of them most of them are tomes and i don't care how long it takes for me to read them other than the ones that i'm contractually bound to read at a certain pace for buddy reads. I don't care how long it takes me. This one has just really hit me. It, from the very first page, I have connected with this. This is the Shawniest Sean book. <laughs> and it's by a man. I first found out about it in Christopher Fowler's The Book of Forgotten Authors and scheduled a buddy read with Amy of Zoe Beck. And we... Started on New Year's Day. I am still behind on our 35 page a day schedule, but I will have no problem catching up eventually because it is holding my interest like you wouldn't believe. And that is, should I tell you what it is? Norman Collins's 1945 novel, London Belongs to Me. What a perfect blend of humor and poignancy. It's about the residence of a it's not dingy, but certainly lower middle class apartment house in the on cool district of London. And to be honest, so far I don't really care where it's set, but that's the kind of reader I am. This could be in Edmonton or Tokyo for how much I care about the setting. The characters are so fully drawn from, from the moment you first meet them on the page. And he does that with humor and emotion like it's re Norman Collins who knew it's early things can go south for me but at this moment and it's not just the wine talking I think I've found a new a writer that I I want to explore in depth let me just quickly tell you the opening scene was of an old man uh, 65 or maybe even older retiring from this company and he'd had a really menial job but he'd been there for 42 years and he ends up being one of the main characters because he lives in this apartment building. But I had no way of knowing that until I got further into the book. It's his retirement party. And he's a very shy guy. He has presented the, all the employees of this, you know, medium-sized company took up a collection. And they bought him a, one of those winding clocks that chimes. They're not a grandfather clock. They sit on a table or whatever. And 
I'm not going to say any more, even though I probably can't really spoil something that happens in the first 20 pages, but you just have to read it for yourself. The struggle that he has, some, possibly because of all the alcohol he drank, but for various other reasons, weather and stuff, and it's told with such comedy, <laughs> getting that clock home. Oh my God, and I have a feeling that that incident is going to resonate through the entire novel and meeting all the other people that live in the house. The way that Collins shows character through, it's not dialogue, it's third-person omniscient, but it's done in that really intriguing way where it seems like it's third-person, but really it's got the the tenor and tone of the character and there was one character in particular where i was just stunned by how well he showed her character in a page and a half that she's optimistic but actually no she's very pessimistic and that's the way she thinks and rendering that on the page in a way that made me laugh but also just wow you've captured that character we've all known people like that that you know undercut the optimistic statement they've just finished saying with something doubly pessimistic, just incredible. I'm not somebody who laughs out loud when I read, and I have done that. I have guffawed and laughed out loud on almost every page. Yeah, it's really starting out fabulously. I haven't checked in yet with Amy of Zoe Beck because I'm behind, but I hope that she's enjoying it too. I have got a very bare start on this collection called Stories, the Collected Short Fiction by Helen Garner. I'm doing this as a buddy read with Natalie of My Reading Days, and I've just read the first story, and she's probably still recovering from her holiday, so we haven't actually talked about it yet. But I liked the first story. It was very short. Uh, it intrigued me, and that's really all I have to say. Natalie and I buddy read her novella, the spare room last year and it was phenomenal so we're buddy reading this a story a week until it's finished i'm about 35 pages into kate atkinson's novel a god in ruins and, and this is a buddy read with lindy from edmonton we haven't checked in yet we're going to check in once a week i love it so much it's making me feel nostalgic for life after life because as many of you probably know life after life's protagonist was ursula and she came from a very colorful family, including her brother Teddy. And this novel it centers on Teddy and his life. And Ursula is a comparatively minor character. Life After Life had that um, being reborn thing, that not reincarnation, but kind of like reincarnation. And this doesn't have any of that. But also, some things are different. And I don't know if that's my poor memory or not, but I absolutely love what I've read so far. And people, I have taken the plunge. I am 30 pages in and completely mesmerized by Duck's Newburyport. That's not very far. I don't seem to be able so far to do more than 10 pages in a sitting, and that's that usually will mean 10 pages a day. I'm going to try to double that on weekends, but I don't care how long it takes me to finish this book. It's just fantastic. Should we have a drinking game for how many times I've said fantastic. If, if you think that's a good idea, go back to the beginning and, and start over. <laughs> but I've read, I'm sorry, I've read 40 pages. And what a delight. I love the voice. I love the stream of consciousness. The fact that has kind of disappeared from what I even notice as I'm reading. I don't know if it's my poor memory or what, but I don't remember people talking about the humor. This is fucking hilarious. She's just cracking me up. And she's such a wordplay, Wilma. <laughs> she's... I mean, I could do a full episode of In Other Words on every page in this book, and I already have a couple planned. Stay tuned. She just, every word that she encounters, she probes in her memory. I don't mean she does research. This is all just happening. Zing, 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 zing. The fact that, the fact that, as she's thinking to herself. But I love the wordiness, the wordplay, the humor, and there's things that are being so far only alluded to that are really poignant about grief and loss. This is starting out just not fantastic. This is starting out amazing. And last but not least, I have started the next in my chronological series of Barbara Pym novels, Crampton Hodnet. And I am 12% of the way in on ebook. And I love it. 
I don't have anything to say. It's just, it's like comfort food. It's, there's just all of the Barbara Pym. There's a new curate and there's a crotchety old maid. And there's younger women that are not sure of themselves that are yearning for the younger men in the novel. And it just works for me. So, <laughs> ah. in terms of what I have started and what I'm still reading, I don't think, I, I don't have a negative thing to say about any of them. I had some negative things to say about what I've finished, but that's par for the course. Uh, who knows what will happen in the future, but boy, is 2020 ever starting out. Is 2020 ever starting out? Is 2020 ever starting out uh, wondrously? I hope it is for you too. Tell me all about it in the comment section below. I will not be starting anything next week. Do you think I have enough wondrous literature to keep me busy for the coming week i do thanks for watching